Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I see a number of people still hopping on here, so I'll give it another minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining. And then while we have some people hopping on, I just want to throw a couple poll questions out here just so we have an idea of who's on the call. Um, one that I like to share is just having an idea of what loan origination system you guys are utilizing so that we just have an idea of, of who you are and, you know, company and all that good stuff. Okay, it looks like we've got people all over the board here, a lot of Encompass, a lot of Point and Point Central users. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for the feedback. Let's see here. Just leave this up here for another second. And then if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them in the questions or the chat box throughout. Happy to answer them as we go along and discuss social media marketing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this poll for now. And then let me go ahead and get back to our polls here. And then the next one is just, since this is social media based, just really would love to have an understanding of what social medias you're currently using or any marketing that you're doing for yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and launch this one too. We're gonna talk to a number of different social medias and tips that we have, but would love to understand what you guys are utilizing so we can really speak to those social medias and how you can best market yourself. Um, looks like a ton of Facebook and LinkedIn as well as Instagram. So. Um, kind of what we are expecting to see, but great to see that. So we'll definitely speak a lot to Facebook and LinkedIn tips for those, um, but tips for those can be utilized across different social media platforms as well. Thank you everybody for answering. And then the last one here before we get started is just um, understanding if there's anything getting in your way of utilizing social media to market yourself and your company. So if there's anything getting in your way, we definitely wanna make sure we're discussing those items on this call as well. Okay, it looks like just tons of not really knowing where to start, um, unsure which markets to plot, uh, sorry, to promote yourself on. We'll definitely be covering those. So thank you everybody for your input. We'll go ahead and get started here. Let me go ahead and close this poll for now. And then we'll ask a couple additional questions at the end. So um, we'll have a couple other polls, but anything that you guys have, any questions you have for us, feel free to let us know and we'll make sure that we're addressing those. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Paisley. I am the general manager at Focus IT. Um, I help both the sales and the marketing team, not only our own marketing, but um, marketing that we put together for our customers. So our main focus is email marketing, um, but we like to host monthly webinars where we highlight things such as social media marketing and giving tips and tricks to our users for that. So definitely excited to share what we have. I also have my team member Cassidy on the call. She is a member of the sales and marketing team as well, has tons of um, great tips and tricks, and let's go ahead and get started. So first off, um, there's tons of information online, right? So we did our best to really try to find some of the best tips. And I found this great article from a company called Denim Social, and they really highlighted what top mortgage companies and marketing company, mortgage companies should be doing for marketing to help grow their business. And one of the biggest things that they said is social media is a cost-effective way to grow your business. It doesn't take too long to just, you know, log on the platform, maybe highlight an employee, maybe share something about the industry, um, an article that you read that you found value out of, do a simple reshare, and that's getting you out there. It's putting you as somebody that um, borrowers can reach out to for information. So it's an easy, cost-effective, free thing that you can do for yourself and doesn't really take too much time in your day. The next is to make sure that you that each post feels like a human. So if you're sharing an article or something like that, put a little blurb, make it feel like it's coming from an actual person and not just, you know, like a sales pitchy vibe. So make it feel like you're a person trying to talk to other people. Um, the next thing that they recommended is have team members share and engage with your posts as well. So if you're one man shop, great. Make sure you're sharing information. Make sure you're having conversations on those posts. But if you have team members, partner companies, anything like that, encourage them to share those posts, increase those engagements, and also have them comment on those posts, like them as well. Um, there's tons you can do to just really build traction for those posts simply on your own. And then the last is to present 
relevant and accurate data. I mean, I guess that really kind of goes without saying, but make sure if you're sharing something that it's timely for what's going on in the industry, uh, that it's relevant to say the time of year. Uh, there's just, you know, make sure you're sharing accurate, good information, shows you as that person with the knowledge and somebody that a borrower is gonna be like, hey, that was a great tip. Let me give them a call. I'm ready to buy my new first house. So just some easy places to start. Cassidy, any questions for me at this time before we hop on to the next slide here? I am I'm not seeing any in the question or the chat box yet. Okay, awesome. Just a reminder, if you guys have anything, feel free to throw it in there. And then the next is just, what are some general tips to follow on all platforms? So I know we had, it was something like 40% of people that responded on our poll earlier, didn't know where to start. Here's some general tips to kind of give you an idea of what to do. The first is promote, promote, promote. So whether that's promoting things that you do as a business, promoting employees, promoting a, an open house that maybe one of your realtor partners is uh, utilizing, just anything you can promote on social media is an easy thing to just put up there, get your name out there and start building that consistency of posting. The next is, if you can, post two to three times a week. And an easy way to do this is to utilize scheduling tools. So there's a ton of tools out there that cost five to 10 bucks a month. And the nice thing is, is with the holidays coming up, for instance, you could go ahead and schedule a happy Thanksgiving post, a happy holidays, you know, some of those that you already know you're gonna post about, go ahead and schedule it so you don't even have to think about it. Um, the next is to keep it simple. So don't need long wordy posts, a, a sentence or two can really go a long way. So don't overthink it. Uh, don't be worried about, you have to have this long novel on there. Just keep it simple. All the, all the important stuff, you could link in an article or something like that, but the post itself as simple as possible. The next is to know your target audience and join industry groups. This is a good one specifically for Facebook. I know we had a lot of people using Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So you guys are working with borrowers, trying to build relationships with realtors, make sure that you're posting content that would be relevant for those people. And then by joining industry groups, it's just a way to get yourself in there, get in the mix. Um, I know there's a ton of really great loan officer specific groups on Facebook that share insights, share things that they're hearing, and it's just an easy place to understand what's going on. And then also a good place to get some information that again, maybe you'll want to share on social media. And then the last is to stick to brand consistency. So make sure you know your wording is similar in each post, you're using your brand colors and things like that, consistently making sure that it's clear that it's you sending this out and not somebody else. And I see um, any questions for any of this, Cassidy? No, nope, but just a reminder, we will be sending out uh, the, the slide by tomorrow along with the presentation, right Paisley? Yes, I'll send out a follow-up email to everybody tomorrow. I'll include the link that you can download this and then feel free to reach out to us with any questions that you have after that. Um, we'll also be uploading this recording to our YouTube so you can always reference it, share it with team members, anything like that. Perfect, that is it so far. Okay, and then just to share some examples of social media posts, I'm gonna let um, Cassidy go ahead and take it over here and I'll monitor for questions. Great, thank you Paisley. So stemming from the tips that she just shared, we wanted to provide some concrete examples for posts that you can utilize across all those platforms the poll was about earlier. Of course, social media does have those endless outlets like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, so it's important to keep an audience in mind and have the right message for each targeted audience. Um, I know when you say audience, it can get quite overwhelming and not knowing where to start, but that's where the scheduling tools like Paisley mentioned come in handy. So the first idea we wanted to provide was promoting your specialty. Is there something that you do that not all loan officers do? You know, for example, if you work with veterans, you can highlight this in a post on differing platforms like Instagram which really targets the younger population, but as well as Facebook, which is known to have an older demographic. They're both effective to get your specialty across quickly and engage with the entire scope of clientele you serve. Second, it sounds really easy, but just promote your business. You know, there are many different opportunities here that you can do like loan officer of the month, meet the team, 
past and future community involvement. This is where LinkedIn would be a great platform to promote your business because it's truly for networking, introducing yourself, your team, where you are. It allows you to meet and engage with others in the industry, open conversations to share insights, as well as identifying any potential referral sources. And then lastly, cross-promoting realtors and other professionals We'll go into greater detail on the next slide for this, but just keep in mind how easy it is to share new listings, updates, accomplishments that realtors or other professionals you work with have done. And a simple share to your audience opens them to new clients, which makes it easier for them to return the favor to you. And this is where Twitter or X is one of the easiest platforms because with one button, you can simply like or retweet it's a very easy action that truly doesn't take any time, but expands your reach. Any questions about these simple examples so far? We have one question specifically about Facebook, but I wanted to make sure we're highlighting more specifically about Facebook and LinkedIn. So we will get to that question here shortly. All right, great. Well, we're gonna go ahead and give you guys a couple ideas going into the holiday season. Um, we know it's the beginning of November, but we brainstormed some ideas for you to be proactive in planning out your posts. You know, getting through that holiday rush in November, December, and the new year is overwhelming. So make sure you take the time to intentionally plan out what you'll be posting to stay ahead of schedule and then stick to it. So we came up with three simple attainable actions to connect with your audience in a more authentic way around the holidays. The first is by showing gratitude, you know, differentiate yourself by taking that extra time to express gratitude for others, which will help your followers see that human side to you that's behind the screen, you know, whether that is expressing appreciation for family, friends, colleagues, your community, you know, by posting a video, acknowledging your team for working hard throughout the year, thanking those professionals that have helped you in some aspect, certain mentors that have impacted you, and promoting the art of giving for seasonal causes and charities. You know, that's pretty self-explanatory, but content like this brings positive attention to your business because it highlights you as an individual and your company you know, how you're committed to giving back versus only the promotional content. You know, do this by sharing a direct link, highlighting a local charity, you know, it shows the followers you're in, invested in more than just profits, which we know isn't the case. But once again, you know, we have to see it through the eyes of the audience. And there are endless options, but whatever you do, whether it's collaborate, collaborating with a specific charity or cause, um, just do what feels good to you and be authentic with that. The second idea is an end of year recap. So post a year in review to your social media to highlight wins. This can be posting pictures that highlight your favorite memories from the year, any professional or personal achievements, certifications that you've accomplished. And then remember, you are the expert. So it's important to forecast trends and upcoming opportunities while looking into 2024. Showcase what you've learned this year, or also engage with your audience. Ask them questions to see what they want to be educated on going into the new year. And then the last one we have is a holiday themed giveaway. So you can do this individually or collaborate with other professionals like the realtors we mentioned before, but these kind of contests are popular around the holiday, but they have yield such great success. So we suggest trying it just one year, see how it drives your engagement on social media because it will always expand your reach on social media. So for giveaways, you can use an image or multiple pictures that have your logo somewhere tied in you know, even thinking out of the box to theme your account for the holidays, you know, change a couple of visuals like your profile picture to your logo, maybe a different color to align with the holiday. But also remember that giveaways do not even need to be a high cost to you. And you can do that by collaborating with other professionals and the local business. So for example, you could see if local businesses would be willing to donate an item for you to create a holiday themed basket, which is the giveaway, like a gift card from a local restaurant, a bottle of wine from a winery, a, 
a blanket from a, a cozy boutique. There are just a lot of ideas uh, to create a giveaway that is low cost to you, but also ignites that collaboration within your community. And then by posting that picture of a basket or whatever you're giving away, and the call to action being to like, comment, share, you know, that drives traffic to you, but also spreads the holiday cheer. So um, we'll go ahead and get into questions, but just tying these holiday examples back into the general tips that Paisley mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. Even through the holidays, we really suggest posting two to three times a week. The best time to post on Instagram over the holidays is between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. Keep it simple. There are free platforms like Canva, Adobe to make it professional looking. Know your audience. Keep it short and relevant with that call to action, like the share, the like, that engagement and then sticking to the brand consistency. So even outsourcing a marketing platform like Pulse to consistently keep you top of mind for your borrowers and your agents. You know, for example, loan officers partner with us for those personalized monthly newsletters for borrowers and realtors around the holidays and also set it and forget it campaigns as well. Okay, we've got a couple of good questions here. Let me start off with Taylor asked a great question just about should you be posting identical across different social media platforms when you do schedule those and what I'd recommend is definitely tweak it based on um, kind of what that target audience is on that platform. Um, so take your general post, uh, change it up just a bit, but for LinkedIn, for instance, you're probably reaching out and having more realtor type people see that information so maybe uh, cater your verbiage to that if you're advertising on facebook or instagram you're most likely uh, posting to people potential borrowers so maybe keep that in mind and then also as far as demographics typically it is um, people a little bit older that are utilizing facebook a little bit more and then instagram typically has people like you know maybe tailor your post to millennials and things like that first time home buyers so you can definitely take the core of what you're posting but i'd make sure you're trying to tie in a little bit to that demographic that you are advertising to specifically on that platform um, but if it was something like a happy holidays, of course, you could keep that pretty consistent and the same. I guess it would really just depend. But if you're promoting yourself and your business, I would keep that in mind when tailoring that. And then I have seen a number of different people just asking if we're going to send out the recording. So, yes, you guys will get the recording tomorrow. Just so a reminder on that. Um, let me see, we've got a number of different ones related to social media here and some uh, related to what you were talking yeah. about, Cass. I'm just trying to find of those. Of course. Here. Yeah, while you read another one, I'll answer one about wording on giveaways and which channel, how to expand Perfect. reach with that. You know, that's where I think the collaboration, like I said, getting your local community involved because we also don't have a lot of money to buy a nice giveaway, if we're being honest. But it's nice then, you know, it's the scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Here's a $50 gift card to our, our local, you know, Italian restaurant. And it's a nice little, you know, make this at home with pasta and a bottle of wine. It can be simple. And then take that picture and you can post it. We'll give an example if we're doing on Instagram. You have a simple picture of the basket and your call to action can say, you know, this is our giveaway for the next seven days. If you like this picture, comment, you'll get entered for your name to be entered. And then you could even say if you share it to you know their story, you can get an additional entry. And then honestly, just keep it up to what feels right for you. If it's a for one week, then you can just um, notify the winner. And there aren't really any strict guidelines on that. Just what kind of fits with you. So just having a, a call to action to determine how they would be entered. Awesome. And then I see a ton of good questions about Facebook in general. So let me kind of just summarize a couple here. Cass, if you have any ideas, great. And then I can share mine as well. So um, a lot of people just asking, should they create themselves their own separate loan officer account or should they use their own uh, personal account? And then also when it comes to posting, should they post on their personal account, their business account or both? 
I think it's completely up to what you, how you feel, um, you know, comfortability. Personally, I would definitely do your own professional Facebook account with you as the loan officer, because then you're branding as that expert to future borrowers, your current clients, and then also other professionals that have Facebook uh, as well. With you having that loan officer account, then you can also get into those Facebook groups that are really popular and you're really branded as your professional versus, you know, of course our personal accounts are great, but sometimes they have the, the things that maybe you don't want to bring into your professional setting. So that is up to you. I would have my own branded Facebook business account just because then you're seen as that expert versus having anything else kind of come in. Um, but that's just, of course, my opinion. Yeah, and what I would add is um, the professional pages are great because you know clearly you can keep business there. But when it comes to promoting, I don't think it hurts if you're sharing something on your professional business page to then share it on your personal page, right? Like mm -hmm. you might have a friend from high school that you haven't talked to in forever, but you make this really insightful, great post and they're about to buy a new house and they'll reach out to you to move that so I think for just generating your own business resharing on your personal isn't a bad idea just because you've got you know a group of people right there ready to buy um, and move forward so I think it'd be great but business accounts not only for like your own loan officer profile but your company as well are super important uh, it's a really great way to have people once they close a house with you and things like that write a review that you then start gathering those on your pages so it's important in my opinion to have both the personal and the business from that perspective so they could comment not only on how your business did but maybe you did as a loan officer and then all of those things are really great things that you can then promote and share across social medias so kind of just generates the cycle of content for you uh, without a heavy lift on your part. So um, I definitely recommend creating your own from that perspective. Um, and then like Cassidy mentioned, um, the, the personal side, like you know, family photos, things like that, you might not always wanna borrow or seeing. So um, keeping those separate is definitely helpful. And then Cass, have you found another good question here? I saw a ton more just came in. Um, I'm still reading them as well. I saw another good one here too. Uh, do you recommend posting on timelines or stories for more engagement? One thing I've seen a lot of people that I follow and I really engage with their posts is they'll post something great on their timeline and then they'll post that post on their story. Um, I know some people, especially on Instagram, I find myself kind of watching stories more than actually scrolling through my timelines sometimes. And so sometimes I would have completely missed a post because I've only been looking at stories. So I'd recommend on all social media platforms, if they have that story component to it, if they have that other way for you to promote what you've posted, definitely do that. I think there's tons of value in that. And just gets, you know, just another opportunity to get another set of eyes on what you are posting. Yeah, I think that discussion covers the most. We do have, uh, Ross has pointed out that auditors will review personal and business pages for accurate disclosures based on every state that you're licensed. And of course, that's a great point. Um, but, you know, if you're every day posting in an ethical, professional manner, um, keep that in mind as well. Um, but great idea to tune into whatever state that you're licensed in. Yeah, and I think that is like you really shouldn't be promoting the rates you can offer somebody or something like that that's not going to keep you compliant but if you're sharing what's going on within your business and promoting realtors and things like that promoting your employees all of that you know should definitely be compliant but i know there's um compliance officers that you can reach out to there's compliance companies we utilize one for our own um, marketing platform and they're always really happy to share some insight i also saw and i'll i'll look up the name and i'll include it in our email tomorrow there is a social media company that i found that actually um, if you subscribe to their services they will make sure that your content is compliant it is a little bit more costly than say that scheduling service but if you were trying to promote kind of outside of some of that stuff that like holidays and your business and things like that, and you wanted to look for a service like that, I do know there is one um, mortgage related. So I will share that information with you guys in that follow-up email in case you wanted to take a look. And we have no affiliation with them. I just thought it was a really cool platform when I was looking online. So I will make sure to share that with you guys. 
sorry, just taking a quick note. So I remember to send that to everybody. Cass, any other questions that you want to hop in on? No problem. I think that was uh, most of them. You know, basically, they're like the polls, of course, the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. There are so many audiences and different demographics, which can be overwhelming. But what's nice is between those, you basically cover them all. And so it's better to post the same message on every single one than, you know, not posting at all. So just do the best you can. And, you know, it is about that reach. And um, if you even Google what kind of audiences or the demographics for each of those social media platforms, you know, that can kind of describe what's there as well. Awesome. And then I saw, um, where was the one? I saw somebody ask earlier, do you recommend creating Facebook groups so that you can post different from realtors and borrowers or friends or just share with everybody? Um, I Let's see. I think depending on what you're wanting to post and what you want those interactions to be, I don't think different Facebook groups hurt. I think if you've got a good realtor base and you know they've got interest in having that discord with you i think that could definitely be helpful i would say i could see it becoming overwhelming to try to manage multiple facebook groups and stay up to date with those because once you do create something like that you do want to make sure that you're constantly communicating and up to date with those so um that would be my only thing is you probably wouldn't want to make too many that it's too much to manage but depending on what you're really build that discord and that conversation around um, I think groups are great. Just make sure you're able to promote those and, and keep it clear what those groups are for. And Paisley, we have a question. What scheduling service do you recommend? So um, one thing that I was, what I noticed on LinkedIn lately is you can go on there if you didn't want to purchase a scheduling tool and schedule future posts. Uh, but the tool that we use is later and the cost is really pretty minimal on that. Again, I think it's five to $10 per month that we use. And my marketing team actually will go in. So for December, for instance, they've already scheduled a majority of our posts that we're gonna send um, already so that we're ready to go. But, you know, sending an email, a post tomorrow with our recording on LinkedIn, for instance, um, I can schedule that later today to go out tomorrow and I don't even have to think about it. So. Uh, there's a number of different tools out there that just happens to be the one that we're utilizing. Great. And then we have a question about if you do have an email newsletter and campaign that you have, would you recommend having the content published on your social media match what is being published on the email campaigns or have it a little bit differentiated? And what we would suggest is, you know, if the goal is to get folks signed up to your email newsletter and have their information, being able to post exclusive content on your social media, for example, on Instagram, you can say, you know, give a little teaser of what you put into the email and say how if you're interested in learning more, you know, sign up here and you could have a link on an Instagram story because then it drives that engagement to get signed up. Um, so. That is something you can do, you know, have a little teaser, but they have to uh, sign up in order to get the full content. Or once again, if time is of the essence, it's better to post than not. And so if it's the same for now, while you get something, you know, figured out, the same content is, is fine too. And then I see some good questions about um, timing for posts and all that. Give me one second. We, we'd run a, webinar in the past with some additional information on this. So let me just go ahead and get that PowerPoint slide open for you and I'll share that with you. So um, we specifically with LinkedIn, um, we found that posting before noon is typically better for the earlier part of the week and then posting midday or afternoon is better for later in the week. I would say that's probably pretty consistent with other social medias as well. Um, and just being aware, you know, Luckily, most people aren't promoting in three different time zones, but if you were, I would say, you know, kind of find that middle date. So for us, since we are, uh, we work with national companies, uh, companies across the country, we try to post around, say, 11 Pacific time um, more often, just so it's not too late in the day for anybody, but not too early as well. Um, and then 
just make sure when you are doing postings that you're kind of aware of when things are going out so that you're able to hop on there and have those interactions and those responses with anybody interacting with your posts. Perfect. Paisley, do you mind going to the last slide just so they can have uh, our information there? Yes, of course. Let me get back to that one here. Okay. For me, it, it perfect. Um, so as we've mentioned, we'll be sending up follow-ups for you guys. And uh, of course, we'll continue to answer any questions now. But if other questions do pop up or you're watching the recording and want to reach out to us, you can feel free to email us um, at that sales email address you're seeing there. We're happy to, to answer any questions remaining. And Great. Then, well, thank you, yeah. everyone. We appreciate the questions too. And like Paisley said, we're here to even be of a resource. This is something we're passionate about, um, marketing and social media. So we're here to help you guys in any way. And we absolutely will send out the recording. So you'll see that from Paisley. And then I've got a couple of just remaining questions for you guys here. So as we mentioned, we do have our own marketing platform. It does a lot of email marketing. I know there were some questions specifically about newsletters and, and using that to cross promote on your social medias. We recommend to our users if they are utilizing our marketing platform to do the same. So we'll include great uh, links for say it's a holiday recipe or something like that that you can share. Uh, there's also a link related to what's going on in the industry and try to make that all timely for the month so if you guys have any interest in finding out what we have to offer on that front we're happy to definitely answer that for you guys and then we do host webinars monthly ourselves at our at focus it so um if you're interested in attending our january webinar i'm gonna go ahead and throw up a poll now if you answer yes we're happy to go ahead and register you for that next one in january and then we do host quarterly webinars with Nan. I don't know exactly what our quarterly schedule is for next year yet, um, but I would expect that at some point in February, we'll probably be running an additional webinar. And just to kind of let you know what we've run in the past, um, we've discussed social media a couple of times, just new things are always coming up. So it's important to make sure we're giving refreshers for everybody. Um, we've also done interviews with realtors and really sharing how you can build relationships with them. So uh, my goal is hopefully early next year to have a realtor on one of our calls again and answer some live questions for you guys. So just to kind of give you a highlight of what we are doing over at Focus IT. And then all of our previous webinars are available on our Focus IT um, YouTube. So if you search Focus IT Inc. in YouTube, you should be able to see those and be able to watch any of those previous ones as well. And then Let's see. Um, my next question here for everybody, just since we're constantly trying to make sure we're sharing information you're looking for, is just what you're looking for for us in any future webinars. Uh, we love to try to make sure we're discussing topics that are important to you guys, because uh, clearly that's why you're signing up. So if you wanted to share any interests you have. And then before we end here, um, I did plan to just kind of highlight some of our Pulse marketing content, if you have any interest in finding out about that. Um, it's one of those set it and forget it. So we directly connect with your loan origination system. We sync your information and can automate things like birthdays, holiday emails for you guys and newsletters. So I'll show some of that content here once I end this poll. And then um, if anybody has any interest in next steps with that platform, we're definitely happy to reach out. I see um, a couple of different questions here. Um, we're good, Paisley. I've been okay. able to jot them down and answer them but uh okay. once again we will be sending out the, the recording of the webinar yes awesome okay and then let me just get back to sharing my screen here with you guys um so as i mentioned we also do marketing for a ton of mortgage companies are you seeing my um screencasts um no it says attending the monthly webinar back in january okay. i think it must have froze on that let me just reshare here okay there we go it looks like it's working now um mm -hmm. so for those interested we have our marketing platform and we have tons of marketing automation we can do for you so 
like I mentioned, we've got monthly newsletters we put together. Our newsletter next week is going out with some Thanksgiving related recipes. Uh, we also have we have a version that goes to borrowers and realtors. The realtor one will have some fun recipes, but also relevant information as to what's going on in the industry. So it gives them a little bit of business insight. Um, I know this month as well also has social media tips for them. So um, just some things in there that hopefully a realtor is interacting with and getting value. And then on the borrower front, uh, we mostly share um, tips for home ownership and recipes related to time of year uh, any little antidote good uh, piece of information we found online and cassidy actually created those so cassidy i don't know if there's anything additional you want to share about those newsletters um uh, just generally speaking we we aim it for it to come through you as the expert so with the borrowers um it's really highlighting about lifestyle uh for their day-to-day -day, it's not only why you should sell, sell now. It's really just cultivating a, a comfortable home, things to look into, industry news. And then for realtors, once again, with you being the agent, not only industry news, but also ways that they can enhance their marketing, how you two can work together. So it just creates um, a nice conversation and you're top of mind every month, but in a really organic way. And just like we kind of shared the the scheduling tips and things like that for social medias, we do send these at the best times to send these types of emails. So typically newsletters about the second Tuesday of and those will go again to borrowers, realtors, and it's easy. You just tell us, we turn it on, we get them out for you. So uh, one of those kind of set it and forget it options. And then we also had tons of holidays, birthdays, loan anniversary content. We try to keep these fresh, but again, just another touch to your borrowers, leads, any contact you have into their inbox, just to get a message going out to them. And then again, we do directly integrate with your platforms. So um, you've got Point Central, you've got Encompass, you have Lending Pad, we're able to work directly with that platform and pull over your contacts so you don't have to export and import and all that good stuff. Um, and then again, it's one of those kind of set it and forget it. So in our ideal world, you tell us what you want to have on and we'll go ahead and turn it on for you so you don't have to worry about it. And then those emails will start going out. Um, before we uh, close up here, it looks like we don't have any additional new questions. Let me just want launch one additional poll here. We will be offering a, um, oh, I accidentally closed it. Let me see if it'll let me resend. Well, I was going to ask if anybody had any interest in moving forward with a free 90 day trial. Um, if you want to go ahead and throw it in the question or chat box, if you do have interest, we can reach out to you. Uh, no cost for setup, anything like that. Again, free for 90 days. And then you can also feel free to reach out to us and email us and we can get that taken care of for you as well. So feel free to let us know. The one poll I didn't mean to uh, accidentally close there is the one that I did. So um, I see a couple of people have interest. My team member, Lanny, will be reaching out to you um, in just a little bit after this webinar, once we can get the list from NAM, and we will reach out to you to, to move forward with your free trial. And then if you guys want to demo or have any additional questions, you can feel free to reach out to our team. And let me just navigate here to our website here. You go to focusitinc.com. If you wanted to reach out to us today, um, our contact information was there, but you can also write on our website, schedule a quick 15 minute demo. So if you have interest in doing that, please feel free to do so. And then um, my team will be following up again tomorrow with that email that will include the recording, the PowerPoint, and it will include a link if you did want to schedule a demo with us from there as well. Let's see, I see um, some people interested in demos and trials. So I'll definitely make sure we're reaching out to you guys from there. and getting things moving forward. Great, yep, and in the interim, please visit the YouTube page where you'll see all these recordings, not only from past uh, webinars with NAM, but also more of um, other ones with industry professionals too. 
Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for hopping on. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us directly. And then again, that automated email will be going out to you guys tomorrow with all those links. So feel free to email us back with any questions you might have as well. I hope everybody has a great rest of their Wednesday and we look forward to having you guys on on our webinar in January. Yeah. Happy thank holidays, you. everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Happy holidays.